to see today's photo, go to mtforchrist.org or follow me, M.T. Clark, on Facebook or Twitter. Good morning. Today's photo of the sun sinking into the horizon over a darkened beach and the breaking waves of the Atlantic comes to us from yours truly, as this was the last photo I took of last night's sunset on my last day vac vacationing in Myrtle Beach. Well, it's Friday, and I know of a few people who would have liked it to stay Thursday forever. But time marches on, and so will I, as I will be traveling to not to not so sunny to the not so sunny suburbs outside of Baltimore, Maryland today, as I know my limitations and have a reservation at Embassy Suites to stay uh, to stay at tonight as I break my return trek to chilly upstate New York into into a two-day journey. So no 13 to 14 hour marathon drive for me. I prefer to fly, and when I'm not flying, I prefer to drive in the daytime. And so I hope to get to my pit stop before sunset with time to possibly take a swim and to enjoy some snacks at the manager's reception. Uh, the Great White North can wait a day. Uh, but because of my desire to get her done, as in to hit the road this morning without delays or from overblogging, I've decided to enlist some help with, with today's post from an old friend, Diedrich Bonhoeffer. As I stated yesterday, my intention for Lent is to go through the 40-day journey with Diedrich Bonhoeffer that is being offered from BibleGateway.com. The link uh, is on the blog today if you want to join the journey. Uh, yesterday, I played catch-up while in my hotel room by going through days one and two. So if you are keeping score at home, we are on day three of Lent. The way it works is there are 40 days of Lent, but they are not necessarily sequential the way you might think. Basically, the countdown begins on Ash Wednesday, and we count each day as a Lent day, except for the Sundays between Ash Wednesday and Easter. If you count all those weekdays and Saturdays between Ash Wednesday to Easter, it actually works out to 40 days. I did it twice. Uh, anyway, uh, because I plan to be on the road at 6 a.m. today, I have taken the liberty of preparing this message in advance on Thursday night and decided to do the third day of the 40-day the journey with Dietrich Bonhoeffer as the material for the post and to demonstrate how a morning devotional is done. It turns out that the subject of the Devo is the importance of morning prayer. So without further ado, I present Day 3 from the 40-Day Journey with Dietrich Bonhoeffer with my responses. From the 40-Day Journey with Dietrich Bonhoeffer, Day 3. And Bonhoeffer writes, uh, This order and discipline must be sought and found in the morning prayer. It will stand the test at work. Prayer offered in the early morning is decisive for the day. The wasted time we are ashamed of, the temptations we succumb to, the weakness and discouragement in our work, the disorder and lack of discipline in our thinking, and in our dealings with other people, all these very frequently have their cause in our neglect of morning prayer. The ordering and scheduling of our time will become more secure when it comes from prayer. And then they share biblical wisdom, which is Mark 1.35, which says, In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. The he, of course, is Jesus. And then we turn to the questions to ponder from the devotional. Uh, the first question is, In what ways might prayer offered in the morning be decisive for the day? And my response is, uh, morning prayer can be can set a foundation for the day as we come before God to connect with Him relationally, to give thanks, make supplications, and seek guidance. Morning prayer can be decisive for the day as it can be used by the Lord to give us strength and guidance to accomplish His will for the day. Morning prayer can be where we make the decision to be faithful, to follow the Lord, and to be open and available for Him to use us each day. And, you know, as I, as I, that's my written response. Um, this is my verbal one. Um, if I had read what Bonhoeffer said, I think that would have been a lot easier to, uh, <laughs> easier to answer as he laid it all out and, and the, and the 
uh, text above. Um, you, you can see that very clearly, actually, if you go up and look. Um, do you agree, and the next question is, do you agree that many of the problems we encounter have their cause in our neglect of morning prayer? Why or why not? My response is, I agree that many of the problems we can encounter could have their cause in our neglect of morning prayer because without the regular practice of morning prayer, we start our day outside of the comfort of the peace of the Lord's presence, which would make us subject to spiritual attacks from the spiritual forces of darkness, or we could simply forget who we are in Christ as our intention to live as Christians are, uh, is undermined fail to practice what we preach. And again, Bonhoeffer gives great wisdom in his opening statement to help you with the question if my response isn't good. Um, yeah, but uh, it's there. Um, <laughs> the next question is, how can prayer lead to the ordering and scheduling of our time? My response is, prayer is a great way to bring our problems and concerns before the Lord to receive his wisdom and guidance to order our lives. When we are intentional about establishing a scheduled time of prayer each day, it should naturally follow that we seek to resolve problems and accomplish our goals in an ordered and scheduled way to do what is right according to and for God. Let me move along to the psalm fragment which is Psalm 5, 1 through 3, and that psalm says, Give ear to my words, O Lord, give heed to my sighing. Listen to the sound of my cry, my King and my God, for to you I pray. O Lord, in the morning you hear my voice, in the morning I plead my case to you, and watch. So obviously Psalm 5 is uh, making a case for morning prayers, um, specifically. Um, and then we move on to journal reflections. Uh, the first question of the journal reflection section of the devotional is, write about how you usually spend your mornings. What do you do before work or school? And my response, besides Sundays, I schedule approximately four hours for my daily spiritual practice. That includes physical exercise, prayer, Bible study, and journaling slash blogging daily. Next question. Are you satisfied with the ways you spend your mornings? If not, how would you like to spend your mornings? My response, overall, I am satisfied with the way I spend my mornings because my morning prayer and other disciplines have provided me with the time with and wisdom from the Lord that I need. And the last question, uh, how is prayer presently a part of your morning? Any changes you would, any changes you would like to make? Question mark. Uh, I pray every morning, but I've struggled at times with shallow prayers or with distractions during prayer. If I could change anything, it would be for my focus to be on the Lord and for me to discern the Lord's will for more effective prayers. And then finally, pray for today. And the written prayer is, Lord, show me a time in the morning when I can listen to you for the daily for the day ahead, and when I can talk to you for the, for the day ahead. And my response is, in Jesus' name, amen. Anyway, okay, well that is how you do a morning devotional for Lent. I would like to thank the Lord, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, and the folks at BibleGateway.com for providing this resource. If you would like to join the 40-day journey with Dietrich Bonhoeffer mm -hmm. uh, for Lent, Go to the link for day one and sign up. And, uh, the link is provided on the blog. So uh, that's that. Well, the Devo provided us with some food for thought, some encouragement, and some Bible verses. So because of that, and because I am traveling today, I will skip the Bible verse of the day. And I may choose to share day four of the 40-day journey with Bonhoeffer, as I will be traveling on Saturday as well. But uh, just like many things on the path of Christian discipleship, I guess we will see what will happen when we get there. Until then, I ask for your prayers for safe travels for me and my family and encourage you to continue in or to develop a scheduled time of morning prayer because it really can be decisive for the day and lay the foundation for a lifestyle of walking and talking with God. 
As always, I invite all to go to mtforchrist.org where I always share insights from prominent Christian, Christian theologians and counselors to assist my brothers and sisters in Christ with their walk. Today we continue sharing from A.W. Pink's The Sovereignty of God as we move ahead to the end of chapter 7, uh, the last point of the impotency of the human will will uh, continue and conclude um, on today's shared resource. So if you want to see what uh, the impotency of the human will uh, has to say or what what AWP has to say about it, uh, go to mtforchrist.org and you'll find that resource at the end of today's blog post. As always, we encourage a lifestyle of Christian discipleship where you walk and talk with God, you read the word, you pray, and you try to shape your life according to what the word says. Um, so you try to love your neighbor as yourself and love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And you try to go out and make disciples to teach everyone to do what Jesus taught us to do. Um, when we do that, when we actually try to live as Christ would have us live, um, we discover that we're not alone. We're walking in the Spirit, and uh, the Spirit's fruit will grow in our lives. So our lives, when we're obedient to God's Word and His call on our lives, we discover the peace, joy, love, kindness, goodness, thankfulness, not thankfulness, faithfulness, <laughs> gentleness, goodness, patience, and self-control that we that we want. Um, that's described as, you know, the abundant life that Jesus promised us. So we encourage you to try it and see for yourself, to go and see what will happen when you try to be faithful. Uh, might not always be easy, but it's the one and only road that leads to peace and everlasting life. So we encourage people to follow Christ and uh, to let him live through you uh, as you put your faith in him. Well, like I said, I'm traveling today slash tomorrow. Um, you know, it's actually tomorrow because it's Thursday evening when I speak this. Um, so pray for us. <laughs> I'm going to pray for you um, as if it was Friday. So let's do that, because it is. If you're listening to this, we're going to hold off until Friday to release it. So, Lord God, Heavenly Father, thank you for another day in your kingdom. Lord, thank God it's Friday. Thank you, Lord, for the vacation that I had. And, uh, Lord, thank you for the end of the work day for uh, all the people who are working and not on vacation. Lord, we like to uh, find your rest. And so, Lord, we just encourage, we just pray that you would encourage us to find our rest in you know that's the place where we find our rest and our peace. Lord, as we as we go uh, traveling today, we just pray for your safety and guidance. Um, and Lord, we pray for the people who might be listening or reading this message. Uh, we pray for them to keep walking and talking with you, Lord. And we pray for you to come alongside them in their walks and help them in their prayer requests, Lord. Show them the things they need to know. And in fact, that's a prayer for us every day is, Lord, just help us to represent you here on the earth. Show us the things we need to know and, and lead us in the path of the things you would have us do. Because, Lord, after you've given us eternal life, all we want to do is represent you and bring other people to the kingdom to show them that there's a hope that's found in Christ alone. And it's the hope that goes beyond all understanding and uh, transcends from this life to the next. Lord, we just can't wait until we're in your kingdom. But until then, help us to find the things you want us to do for you, uh, to give us a purpose uh, here in your kingdom. Lord, we thank you. We praise you. We love you. We pray all these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.